Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna start the animation process. This is the most amazing part for me and I hope you enjoy watching this video tutorial as well. Okay, let's get started. I want to start animating the rocket from frame 30 because I want to add some effects and small animations to the environment before the rocket enters the screen. For animating the rocket, I'm going to use this transform layer. So select it and open position property by pressing the P key. At the beginning of the animation, I want this rocket to be outside at the bottom of the screen. So hold the spacebar key and click to pan. And let's move the rocket to somewhere like here or even lower, maybe here. Let's enter round numbers, for example, 2000 and 2000 for X and Y. And now click on this stopwatch to create a keyframe at frame 30 for this position. Okay, let's go a few frames forward, for example, to frame 75. And let's move the rocket to somewhere like here, to the left. And let's enter round numbers, for example, 1100 for X position and 450 for Y position. Let's go a few frames forward again, maybe frame number 130. Move it to the left around here. And let's enter 750 and 700. Okay. Let's go to frame 200. Move it to, to the right and let's enter 1100. And for the Y position, let's move it to the top, for example, 570. And finally, let's go to frame, for example, 265. And in this frame, let's move it out of the screen. Let's pan a little bit. And move it to somewhere like here. For example, 100 for X position, and let's move it a little bit higher. For example, let's enter negative 700 for Y position. As you can see, our rocket rises from this point. We will have a rotation here at the center of the screen, and finally, it will go out from this point. Okay, now I want to modify this path to have a smooth rotation here. So, select all these keyframes, right-click and choose keyframe interpolation. And here for these two drop down boxes, let's choose Bezier option. Okay, as you can see now, we have two handles in each keyframe. I want to modify this path to have a nice circle shape here. So let's use this Convert Vertex tool and select this fourth tool. And now click and drag on this keyframe to create a nice curve shape here. In fact, I'm looking to make a circular shape. If you want to move these keyframes on the screen, use Selection Tool. Let's move this keyframe a little bit to the right to have a smooth circular path here. And you can move the handles as well. To be able to move the handles separately, hold the Alt key and click and drag the handle. Okay, I think we have a nice circular form here. Okay, now let's play the animation to see what we have so far. Let's go to frame 25 and then press the B key to snap the work area start handle to this frame. Now hold the shift key and click somewhere around frame 265. After Effects will snap the timeline indicator to the nearest keyframe, which is frame 265. And then press the N key to snap the work area end handle to this frame. Now After Effects will only play the animation between frames 25 and 265. Okay, now I want to play a ramp preview, so let's decrease the resolution. This will create ramp preview faster. In preview panel, we can set a shortcut for playing the ramp preview. By default, the shortcut is a spacebar, but you can change it to shift, a spacebar, or numpad, and so on. I prefer to use a spacebar key. Now, you can press the spacebar key or press this play stop button. Okay, it's good for the first try, but we can make it more interesting. I think it's better to have different speeds in some positions. Uh, let me show you something. If you look closer to this animation path, you can see some dots here. With these small dots on the path line, we can identify where the speed is high and where the speed is low. Where the spaces between these dots are getting smaller, it means the speed is decreasing. Now I want this rocket to enter the screen at high speed, so here the distance between these points is greater. 
and the closer it gets to this circular shape, the lower the speed. And as you can see, the points are getting closer to each other. And when it goes out of this circle, I want it to speed up. And as you can see, the distance between these points increases. Okay, let me change the handle of this keyframe a little bit to change the animation path. Okay. Let's scrub in timeline. Okay, and maybe it's better to change it a little bit as well. Okay, it comes from here, rotate, and exit. Okay, great. Now I want to modify the speed of the rocket. To do this, select the position property and click on this graph editor button. Here in graph editor, we have two axes. Vertical axis shows the speed value. It shows a speed value by pixel per second scale. And we have a horizontal axis that shows the frame number or in fact time. Here we have a curve that shows the speed of the motion. Make sure you are in edit a speed graph mode. Also, we have another mode called value graph that shows the value of keyframes. I don't want to change it, so let's switch back to edit a speed graph mode. Okay. I want my rocket to have a high speed when it enters the screen here around frame 50. So I want to have a high speed in frame 50 and the speed will gradually decrease as it approaches the circle. So let's lower this keyframe so that at the beginning of the move in frame 30 we have a speed with zero value. The speed will gradually increase until frame 50. Now let's move this handle to right a little bit. Now move the handle of the second keyframe to the left to have a peak around frame 50. Okay, now as you can see here, the spaces between these dots are changing as I move this handle to the left and right. Now the rocket will have a higher speed in frame 50 and when it gets closer to frame 75, the speed gradually decreases and as you can see, the speed graph reflects this motion nicely. Okay, now let's move and modify handles of these keyframes to have a smooth speed transition in these keyframes. At the bottom of the graph, as you can see, we have almost a flat line that forces our rocket to move at constant speed. And after frame 200, I want to speed up the rocket again. So let's bring down this last keyframe and move the handle to the left. And finally, let's move the right handle of the fourth keyframe to the right to have a nice and a smooth speed transition in this keyframe. Maybe it's better to move this handle to the left even more. I think it's okay now. Okay, now as you can see, the space between the points gradually decreases, which means our speed also decreases. Here in this circle, we have almost a constant speed and you can see that the distance between the points is the same. And when the rocket wants to leave this circle, as you can see, the space between the points increases, which indicates that the speed of the rocket is also increasing. Okay, great. Let's press the spacebar key to see a ramp preview for this animation. Okay, nice result. To see the animation in full screen mode, put your mouse over composition window and press the tilde key on your keyboard. Okay, great. We can change the form of the animation path a little bit. For example, let's move the handle of this bottom keyframe. Something like this. Let's see the result. Okay, I think it's okay for now. If you need, you can change it again later. You can select and modify keyframe handles to have different speeds and results. Try to have a nice and smooth transition in this speed graph to have a good result in your animations. So modify these handles to get the best results. Here in frame 30, we have zero value for speed. Then it increases gradually until frame 50. After that, the speed decreases until frame 75. Then we have almost a constant speed until frame 200. And after that, the speed increases again until frame 225 that we have the highest possible speed when the rocket goes out of the screen. And finally, the speed decreases again to zero value in last frame. Okay, now if you want to move the animation path to another place on the screen, simply click on position property to select all of its keyframe and now you can click on one of these keyframes in composition window and move the animation path and you can put it wherever you like. 
Okay, I think it's not a bad idea to modify the handle of this bottom keyframe to change the motion path when it enters the screen. Okay, great. Let's see another ramp review. Press the spacebar key. Okay, but let me lower the path a little. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's change this keyframe position as well. I mean fourth keyframe position. Okay, great. Now you can move keyframes on the screen, change keyframe handles in composition window and in graph editor. Even you can move keyframe positions here in timeline to get the best results. I have shown you the way and now it's your turn to practice to gain more experiences in creating animations in After Effects. Okay, now I want to add a rotation to this rocket in this path. In fact, I want to align this rocket to the path at the beginning and ending of the animation. And when it's inside this circle path, I want to change the rotation. So, select the transform layer. Press the R key to load the rotation properties. And here, I want to rotate this rocket in Z axis. So, let's keyframe this Z rotation value. But before adding more keyframes to this layer, let's add some markers to this composition to find keyframes easier. So, hold the shift key and click around frame 30 to a snap timeline indicator to this frame. Deselect the transform layer. Now from the menu, choose Layer, Markers, Add Marker, or press the Start key on your numpad. Okay, we have a marker here. Now let's go to frame 75 and press the Start key on your numpad. And do the same for the other keyframes as well. Remember that if a layer is selected in timeline, when you press the start key, After Effects will add that marker to the selected layer. Now again select the transform layer, press the R key, and let's go to frame 30, and let's see the rocket at this frame. I want to align the rocket to the animation path, so let's rotate it here. Let's change the Z rotation to, for example, negative 25 and create a keyframe here. Let's go to frame 75 and change it to 30. After Effects will create a keyframe here automatically and go to frame 130 and let's reverse the rotation value, maybe 10. Okay. Let's go to frame 200. Reverse the rotation again to, for example, I think negative 50 is okay. And in frame 265, let's rotate it to find the best value. Maybe 0 is okay. Or maybe negative 15. Okay, let's modify the handle a little bit. Okay. Okay, now let's see a run preview. Okay, it seems we need to modify Z rotation keyframes and curves a little bit. So, let's select all rotation keyframes and right click, keyframe assistant, and select easy ease or press F9. Okay, now while all rotation keyframes are still selected, switch to graph editor window. Here only select Z rotation property to show its keyframes. And now I want to modify keyframe handles. But this time, make sure we are in edit value graph mode. Now, if I click on the handle, as you can see, only this handle moves. In fact, they move separately from each other. If you want to move these two handles together, you have to use this convert vertex tool. Click and then drag to create and move handles together at the same time. Okay, let's move these handles a little bit to have a nice and smooth transition in Z rotation path in each keyframe. For the third keyframe, we can click and drag, and here let's add a little bit overshoot. It means we will pass the value after frame 130 a little bit more, and then it will decrease again. Okay. And let's add a little bit overshoot in frame 200 as well. So click and drag and change the handle's angle to make an overshoot after frame 200. So it will rotate a little bit more after frame 200 and then the rotation will change to a positive value again. Okay, let's see a ramp review. Okay, great. 
Here I think we can change the handles angle a little bit. Let's find the best angle for handles. Okay. Okay, I think it's not a bad idea to add keyframe here in frame 222. Okay. Let's open graph editor again to see what we have here. Okay, it seems we need to change the handles here. So click and drag with convert vertex tool and okay. I think it's better now. Let's see a ramp preview again. Okay, and in full screen mode. Okay, great. I'm satisfied with the result. You can work on it even more. You can open graph editor for Z rotation and change the curve shape and handles angle to get different results and to have a nice and smooth transition in your position and rotation animations. Okay, as a final touch, let's add a little bit offset to our rotation animation. This will improve our final result. So select transform layer and press the U key to load all keyframed properties. Now select all Z rotation keyframes and hold Alt and Shift keys and press the left arrow key on your keyboard to move and offset your keyframes 10 frames to the left. Now move the work area start handle to be before the first frame. And now let's see this result. Okay, great. I want to avoid to have position and rotation keyframes in the same frame. This will improve the final result. In fact, by doing this, you remove mechanical style from your animations. Because in real world, when an object wants to move and rotate, these two actions never happen at the same time. Okay, awesome. I'm totally happy with the final result. In the next video, we want to add great effects to our environment. We will add camera and some interesting effects to clouds and much more to have an alive background. So don't miss the next amazing video. Thanks for watching and see you soon.